That stolen package was booby trapped by former NASA engineer turned YouTube star Mark Rover. This is the second year he set out to teach porch pirates a lesson with an elaborate fake package that uses GPS, glitter, and some horrendous smelling spray, along with, of course, four phones to record every angle of the whole thing. Operation Butt Trumpet initiated. Oh. But not everyone was greeted with a stink bomb and a face full of glitter. Mark gave 400 bucks each to Good Samaritans who instead of opening the fake but expensive headphones, tried to return the packages to their rightful owners. Thank you, Thank you. for being one of the good ones, Thank man. You. There are a lot of myths when it comes to food. Your list is on right now. Dissecting and debunking popular food fables. It's not going to detoxify you. Plus, prepare your furry pal for the long haul. We're used to traveling. We're used to going to hotels, right? But dogs aren't always. Three pet travel essentials to help make your road trips safer and more fun. But first, the techniques for a new body rejuvenation trend and what you need to know before you try it. Young, old, we really are the answer to every body. Body. That's on the top of our list right now. Hey everyone, I'm Shaguna Dulo. All the sitting we do has created an epidemic of tight muscles and ligaments that can create chronic soreness and inflammation. While stretching helps, a new trend takes it up a notch. Our Teresa Strasser is taking a look at assisted stretching, and that's our featured story on the top of the list. If you look like a piece of origami every time you get out of bed, you gotta get your stretch on with one of the latest health trends. Assisted stretch is really the answer to how you get into positions that you couldn't get into yourself. Jennifer Gage of Stretch Lab and flexologist Katie Magnuson tell us about the benefits of assisted stretching. Whether you are an elite athlete, whether you are sedentary in lifestyle, young, old, we really are the answer to every body. For starters, it improves posture and mobility. Everyone's posture is getting worse. When you get up out of a seat, if you're youthful, you will get out of that seat mm -hmm. very easily. Mm -hmm. If you hurt anywhere, typically yes. it takes you a minute yes. to kind of get into a good posture. Hours spent slouched at a desk, looking down at a smartphone, can create tension in stiff muscles in the hips, back, and neck. Stretching really gives your body the ability to glide across the room again. So when you have a certified flexologist moving your body, they can really get you that stretch in that particular area. Next, it decreases pain and stress. It helps with the circulation, so when your muscles are tight, that blood flow just kind of pools in there, but after the stretch, the blood starts to flow. She says to think of your muscles like old, knotted elastic bands that keep you from moving freely. Assisted stretching can get your muscles past the point where you can do it yourself. You're elongating the muscle, so it's lengthening, so you're able to withstand more pressure and you know you can move a lot better. The assistance also lets you relax your body and concentrate on the stretch itself. You can focus on your breathing and you know just get into that nice deep stretch. Finally, assisted stretching can increase strength and flexibility. A good example that I have of a client, his form in Pilates has significantly improved because of the stretching. His kickboxing, um, he's able to do higher kicks because you know his hamstrings and glutes are much more loose. And I would think that's true for tennis too because there's so much shoulder. Right, rotator cuff. We have some great rotator cuff stretches that we do with our clients. The increased range of motion also benefits you when lifting weights or heavy objects. When you stretch the muscles, you're able to go into a deeper squat, so you're able to increase that strength in the quads, or if you have tight glutes, you can get a little bit deeper each time into that squat. Elite athletes have always been stretched by their trainers, so this is really the stretch for everybody. Stretching for the stars on the top of the list. We extended our muscles, now let's expand our horizons. If your holiday plans include road tripping with a pet, you've got to make sure they're comfortable and happy. Here are three pet-friendly travel essentials, so traveling with your friend will be a breeze. 
Nothing like traveling with your tail wagging furry friends to make a road trip all the more fun. But it also requires some extra planning. We spoke to lifestyle expert Adina Anderson, who shared three pet jet setter travel essentials your possum pooch will love. We travel all over the country. We've been to 48 states. First, we're packing up with a travel tote. I love this travel bag. It's a dog gear travel bag. They call it the weekender or the week bag. This is a really cool one because it's got the doggy dishes in there, so you don't have to worry about finding dishes. Some of the hotels I stay in have kitchens, but sometimes they don't. A pet travel bag is a one-stop shop for packing items, such as extra toys, pet medicines, and potty pads. We're used to traveling. We're used to going to hotels, right? But dogs aren't always, so you definitely want to have some of their favorite things. Pet travel bags are available online and at your local pet stores from $50 to $150. Next, a car seat. Car seats are really important because it holds your dog in, whether they're small or big, but mainly because they can't get out and run around while you're trying to drive. That's a safety hazard. And then when you stop, you don't want them running out of the car, you know, and you have to chase them down. To avoid these safety hazards, she recommends buying a harness and getting your dog microchipped before hitting the road. This will hold them in and it connects right to their harness and it connects right to the seat. I don't suggest you put it in the front seat, just like a baby car seat, with, you know, with the airbags, that's a danger. Pet car seats are available online from $20 to $100. Last on our list of road trip travel essentials for your pet, a safety coat. So if you're walking at night, because sometimes, you know, when you're road tripping, you do travel into the night and you want, still want to take them for a walk. So it's got these reflector strips on there and then also has the harness that holds it onto the dog. So then you can also put the leash through. Safety coats for pets are available online from $10 to $50. So it keeps them warm, it keeps them safe, and it keeps them dry on bad days, bad weather days. We're helping you hit the road pet prepared with three road trip travel essentials for your best companion. Up next, it's a big happy fun celebration. Jammies, a pink flamingo, and a special visit with Santa. Extraordinary people spreading cheer. And holidays turn into Hollywood's hot season. We're checking out four new movies opening in theaters soon. Plus, we're in the midst of the biggest economic change since the Industrial Revolution. The future of schools, how changes to education could change the economy. It's all coming up next. Welcome back, folks. Whether you're a pro in the kitchen or just a microwave master, there are lots of culinary do's and don'ts that people swear by. But are they true or false? We're setting the story straight by debunking food myths. There are a lot of misconceptions floating around the kitchen. What's myth, what's reality when it comes to cooking? Well, there are a lot of myths when it comes to food. To sort fact from fiction, we turn to nutrition coach Andrea Barkley. First up, the age-old notion, because of the chemical tryptophan, turkey makes you sleepy. Guess what? It's a myth. Why does tryptophan get such a bad rap? I think tryptophan in Turkey, it's so well known at Thanksgiving, uh -huh. and you are historically just tired after a big Thanksgiving meal. But tryptophan, which is an amino acid, it's present in a lot of other foods, like chicken and beef, but also in nuts and cheeses. I think it's simply that huge amount of food that you're eating at Thanksgiving, it can, in conjunction with all of the carbs, all of the fat, all of the sugar. Uh -huh. You're gonna have a big blood sugar drop and coma town, here you come. So turkey's really getting a bad rap. It's all that other stuff. Turkey's fine. <laughs> okay. Next up, the belief that removing the skin from chicken makes it healthier. That's a myth, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Fat is a really important part of your diet, right? You need fat in all of your cells, in your organisms, in your brain health. Fat is such an important part. So a little bit of fat in that chicken skin is absolutely not going to make or break your caloric bank. In fact, it's good for you. It's filled with monounsaturated fats like oh. olive oils and nuts, and so it's a really important part of your diet. So one piece of chicken with a skin on it, I'm not ballooning past my goal weight. You could probably have two or three. All right, I like that. Finally, going on a juice cleanse after an eating binge will detoxify you. Well, unfortunately, a juice cleanse won't scientifically detox your body. That's oh. why you have a liver. The, <laughs> <laughs> the liver will take care of that for you. I'm not saying that juices aren't good for you. Okay, so all of that 24-hour juice cleanse after like maybe a Thanksgiving meal, not really doing too much. It's not gonna detoxify you. Thanks, Andrea. Now we can trim the fat by knowing the facts as we debunk food myths.
One thing that's definitely not a myth, this holiday season had tons of headlines sure to put a smile on your face. Teresa Strasser has three stories spreading Christmas cheer on the buzz list. Thanks, tis the season to spread Christmas joy with these cheery headlines. First, Grinches in Arvada, Colorado stole Brent Stevenson's prized pink flamingo Christmas decoration, but after news broke on their neighborhood website, he got over a hundred comments in just a few hours and... The gentleman comes up and he says, I'd just like to thank you and here's a replacement for your flamingo. After that, a woman dropped off another flamingo. The 73 year old has been putting his epic light display up for 20 years. And with the outpouring of support, he's realized it's become a beacon of joy for his community. One of the comments that we got was from a guy that he said, my dad used to bring me here when I was a kid, and now I bring my kids by to see it. That one did bring a tear to my eyes. It's like the tree is like different colors. Well, the boys really look forward to it. We call it the Winter Wonderland House. I would sport that flamingo in my yard all year long. Next, Jammy Claws. It's a new book about the unknown story of Mrs. Claus and it promotes women's empowerment while celebrating Christmas traditions. If you didn't know, Mrs. Claus charts Santa's path the night before Christmas and delivers pajamas to good boys and girls all over the world, hence her nickname, Jammy Claus. The book's author, Megan Holmes of Shaker Heights, Ohio, wanted to put Santa's spouse in the spotlight. This is another playful way to introduce female leadership to children by having a book about a woman that charts the path for Santa because she delivers jammies on Christmas Eve. She wants every child to feel safe and loved and valuable and worthy. She's even got kind of a Rosie the Riveter look going on. That is one mighty Mrs. Claus. And the third cheerful Christmas headline making our list is about Santa paying an early visit to visually impaired children in Tampa, Florida. Nearly 75 students from all over Hillsborough County spent the day enjoying arts and crafts, pizza, and of course, gifts from Santa. It's a big, happy, fun celebration. It's just a great event. I enjoy it a lot. Two of them. Three of them. That truly is the spirit of the holiday. Enjoying Christmas cheer before the new year on the Buzz List. Old Saint Nick, the ultimate role model for the nice list. What a guy. Lots more of the list is still to come, so stay with us. Now from the list, take coffee from your mug to your grub with this tasty coffee rub steak. First, mix equal parts of pepper, Himalayan sea salt, and ground coffee in a bowl. Light roast, medium roast, what do you I recommend? Just whatever you prefer, I go Kona. Then, oil your steak and apply the coffee rub all over. Finally, cook the steak to your desired temperature and voila. That coffee gives it a special flavor. For everything that's new now and next, go to thelisttv.com. We are back. The holidays are about gifts being open, but they're also about movies opening. Christina Guerrero is checking out four, arriving between now and Christmas, and they're on the hot list. If it's your tradition to watch a new movie on Christmas Day, consider these four options, starting with Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Long have I waited. The ultimate space saga gets its ninth installment featuring a long-awaited epic showdown between Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver's characters. Episode 9 will be a conclusion of a story that is over 40 years in the making. Your journey nears its end. Yes, this is the final movie of the Skywalker movie series, but come on, you know it won't be the end of Star Wars. After all, the Force will be with you. Always. Now from Star Wars to World War One, with a look at 1917. They're walking into a trap. Your orders are to deliver a message calling off tomorrow morning's attack. If you don't get there in time, we will lose 1,600 men. Your brother among them. Good luck. Yikes, talk about a high stakes mission. This film follows two young British soldiers as they attempt what seems like an impossible task that takes them through enemy territory. It's in theaters on Christmas. That is only one way this ends. And from a movie about brothers to likely the most famous story about sisters, little women. I'm working on a novel. It is a story of my life. And 
and my sisters. This is the eighth time the coming of age story from 1868, which tracks the different paths four sisters take as they grow up, has been given the cinematic treatment. This version stars Emma Watson, Meryl Streep, and Saoirse Ronan, and is also in theaters Christmas Day. I'm so sick of people saying that love is just all a woman is fit for. I'm so sick of it. And finally, from a famous story about people to one about cats. Here we go! <laughs> in theaters tomorrow, James Corden, Judi Dench, Idris Elba, and Taylor Swift play felines in this movie based on the 1939 book that's since become one of the longest-running award-winning musicals of all time. So which of these movies will you be seeing on Christmas Day? Now it is time to make the choice. Well, hopefully that decision's a little easier to make now, thanks to the hot list. Wow, James Corden in that cat suit? Hope he does an episode of Litter Box Karaoke on his show. We'll be right back. Thanks for sticking with us. The do-it-yourself trend dominates TV, Pinterest, and YouTube. And Jimmy Rhodes says now it's become popular in the world of academia too, where people are seizing control of their education like never before. Hey Jimmy, what's the deal? With the rise of the gig economy, there's a tectonic shift in how we prepare for our work and careers. We're in the midst of the biggest economic change since the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution moved people out of the fields and into the factories, and the current revolution is moving people off their fat butts and onto even fatter butts. Dieter Latour is from the educational services giant Pearson, which recently conducted a survey of 11,000 people across 19 countries. It's the first survey that really listened to how learners feel today about education and learning in their countries. We're running down the survey's highlights, starting with the rise of DIY education. People are figuring out how to educate themselves, so how to skill, reskill, upskill throughout their entire lives. This action reflects some surprising attitudes. Almost half of respondents didn't feel higher education education prepared them for their careers. And almost everyone agreed that education has to continue beyond school. They're doing what we call do-it-yourself education, patching it together through short courses, online courses, free courses on YouTube. Which are especially helpful if you want to learn how to unbox toys. Look at all of this stuff in here. With so many people ad hocing their own learning, it's a wake-up call that universities have to change. The current structure was built for another time. It is not built for how people learn today. And here's something to make the purists cry. It's not really about just learning for learning's sake anymore. People want to know that there are outcomes from their learning that benefit their lives. There are options for universities to meet learners where they are. You could do stackable courses and degrees. You could do badging for certain skills. You can do just very skill-based learning. The final big takeaway from the global survey, strategically, people say they need to out-human the robots. In a world of AI, and automation and digital, people understand inherently that in order to beat the machines, you need to be more human. Because robots may be good at the mathy stuff, but only a human knows when to bring a bummed out coworker a bunt cake. The greatest example is soft skills, creativity and negotiating skills and skills on how to work with people, leadership skills. This is where universities with an emphasis on group projects and collaboration can still shine. Looking at the future of education is what's the deal. Great information, Jimmy. Focusing on what you want to learn will definitely make it more fun and interesting. 